Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. So today I'm sitting down with Vladimir from EN Coins to talk about how they're bringing privacy transactions to the Cardano blockchain. So Vladimir, you're very welcome onto the channel and thanks for taking the time to come on. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Paul, for, for having me. Yeah, no problem. So, so we start out with an introduction to who you are and then we'll get into what the protocol or project is that you're building. Okay. Uh, sounds great. Uh, so uh, my name is Vladimir. Uh, I'm a founder and a protocol architect for Endcoins, and uh, so we we have been working on this protocol for one and a half years, uh, approximately. And um, right now we are on the test net, and uh, we are doing. The, we started the audit of the protocol. Endcoins is a private transaction protocol uh, but, uh, that uses NFTs. Uh, we basically the way it works is uh, the user sends some amount of data into the protocol and decides how uh, he'll uh, split uh, those data between uh, between the coins. And uh, this is this happens on the user side, so uh, nobody uh, except the user knows uh, how much each N coin worth. And at any point of time, the user can redeem uh, one or several of those coins and get the ADA back from the protocol. Uh, and of course, because uh, these are NFTs, you can uh, send, gift, trade. Uh, them or use them on one of the NFT platforms, for example. So this is the, the basic uh, Endcoins protocol. And then we also have uh, what we call Endcoins Ledger, where uh, it's a smart contract where you can send your uh, Endcoins and uh, you can uh, transfer uh, this value to other users by just uh, giving them the, the secret key we, we call it the minting key uh, for for a particular coin, and this way you you can transfer value to another user. Uh, they will need to to do a remit transaction, where they uh, burn the coin and create a new one to get the full or ownership of it. Yeah, so uh, th that's basically the two modes that we have right now in version one. Okay, so I suppose we get into on a high level how how it all actually works. And so from what you said there, my understanding is that I have 1,000 ADA. I want to send 500 ADA to you and I can mint two NFTs, is it? And I can send one of the NFTs to you, but nobody else will know how much ADA is locked up in that. And then so I can keep one and I send one to you. You can redeem that at any point for the amount of ADA that's in it. But what's to stop someone else looking at um, that NFT so they know I've sent you the NFT and then they see you redeem the NFT for 500 ADA. It, do, it I suppose that's kind of a break in the private transaction or is there a way to mask that for the user? Uh, uh, as a recipient, I can use it, for example, uh, to uh, to split uh, those NFT into uh, some more. Uh, for example, I can I can uh, uh, I can mint a zero ADA uh, M coin, and uh, this way it's uh, it's unclear. Uh, I can still redeem the the, the five hundred one, right? From uh, that I received from you, but uh, because I also mint another one which is zero ADA, it's still not clear uh, how much you send me. It could be like one thousand ADA uh, th that you originally put into the protocol. Okay, and if say it becomes wider, there's wider use of it, and I have ten different NFTs sitting in my wallet from EN coins, all with different values. Can I combine them then into one amount or do I have to work with them individually? Yes, of course, you can combine uh, as many as you want. Well, uh, we have a restriction. Uh, 
in order to 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 for transactions to always succeed uh, that uh, you can only combine uh, like uh, four endpoints at a time but uh yeah yeah you can totally uh, combine you can split them however you want is all of this happening on the layer one cardano blockchain or have you guys got a layer two the part of this happens on or how how does it work and how are the proofs this was who tracks the value of each individual nft Yes, so uh, the values of individual NFTs are known only to to the owners of those NFTs, and uh, uh, when they want to uh, burn uh, those coins or mint new ones, they uh, need to send uh, zero knowledge proofs uh, to the verifiers. Uh, right now, uh, in version one, we will be using uh, trusted verifiers where uh, you send them the proof and they sign it and then they send it to the relayers. The relayers then construct the transaction for you and uh, depending on the mode, so in wallet mode, uh, it's uh, you submit the transaction and uh, in the ledger mode, uh, the relayers themselves submit uh, the transaction. Okay, and the relayers, can anybody become a relayer or is there going to be a process where you pick the relayers or is it open? Yeah, so uh, relayers uh, do not require trust of the users because uh, all they do is uh, to, uh, is they, uh, use the data that users send them to create transactions and to post them on chain so uh, anybody can become a relayer uh, in principle uh, the all our code is open source uh, but uh, we want uh, the layers to provide uh, good service to our users so what we decided to do is we decided to maintain a list of uh, relayers and we decided that we will include relayers that have uh, at least uh, 100,000 uh, in endcoins uh, ENCS uh, tokens uh, dedicated to them. So uh, as a relayer, you do not need to have this sum. Uh, yeah, and uh, relayers from this list, they, they get connected with uh, random users and they uh, receive uh, fees for, for their work. And uh, uh, as a relayer, if you want to get to, onto this list, you do not need to have the full sum uh, because uh, right now uh, it's uh, quite, quite a large sum. And what we did is... Um, users will be able to delegate uh, and NCS owners will be able to delegate the ENCS to, to the relayers and uh, the relayers then can share uh, profit with them. Okay, so if someone has the 100, I think the price is something around two ADA or a little bit under, so that's about 200,000 ADA for the relayer, if they have it themselves, that's essentially their pledge. So they have skin in the game for to um, up to hold the uh, protocol up and to keep it in good standing. Or if they don't have it themselves, others can come in and share in that and earn part of the profit. So will will you be building on top of this then? Or will can other native assets be wrapped into the NFTs or is it just ADA? So in version one, it will be just ADA. That's what we are, uh, what we have right now on the testnet, and that's what we will be releasing, uh, I guess, relatively soon. Uh, we we do not have a date uh, for now because we do not want want to hurry our auditors. But uh, then we plan to what we plan to do is version two, and uh, right now we submitted two proposals related to, to this work uh, for Project Catalyst Fund uh, 10. And in version two, uh, one of the key features will be uh, the support of all native assets. 
And uh, if you think about it, uh, it will enable a lot of uh, new use cases for endcoins, for example, OTC trades between uh, different coins and uh, more, uh, many more collaborations with uh, different DeFi projects and maybe even uh, with some NFT projects as well. You currently have a proposal in Catalyst Fund 10 for that then, is it? Um, yeah, we have two proposals for uh, Project Catalyst Fund 10. Um, the first one is related to the uh, front end and uh, UI UX. So what we want to do is we want to uh, build a new design, which is uh, much closer to the uh, to a Cardano wallet. Uh, but with privacy features. So from the user perspective, uh, we hope that uh, it will work, it will have a, an experience similar to interacting with a normal uh, wallet, but you, you will also have uh, privacy features and uh, you can uh, basically switch between um, the, your private, private shielded account and uh, a normal account uh, that, that you have in any wallet. Uh, so if you compare it to something in other ecosystems, it would, mm, the way I imagine it, it would be something similar to Railgun in Ethereum ecosystem. And uh, so, yeah, and this is the first one and we, in this proposal, we want to also uh, develop the interface for our DAO because right now we support only uh, simple polls where uh, the users uh, cast their vote by, by submitting transaction, essentially sending uh, their funds to themselves and uh, putting some metadata in the transaction. And uh, uh, we want to do a full scale DAO so for, for, we will be using uh, Agora uh, on the back end, but for the front end, we will need to develop this. So th this is the first proposal. And the second one is uh, the back end stuff, and this will cover all the new features that we'll have. We'll have. Um, in particular, uh, we in version two, we will transition to uh, fully uh, trustless uh, proof verification process. So uh, zero knowledge proofs will happen on chain. Uh, this uh, will be enabled by the uh, new Plutus primitives that uh, should uh, should arrive like in, in the next hard fork. And uh, besides that, we will have, uh, as I said, uh, native asset support. Uh, yeah, and uh, also uh, the feature that uh, that is called collaborative transactions. Okay, yeah, I'll put links to the Catalyst proposals down below for anyone who wants to look a bit further into them. And just in terms of, so when I mint the NFT, who holds custody of the ADA then? Is that locked in a smart contract or where does that sit? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so the ADA is sitting in uh, in the smart contract. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's it's impossible to send it without uh, the user input and uh, the signature from the verifier. And will that just be one smart contract holds it all, or is that and is that audited? You mentioned something at the start about the audits have started, have they? Yeah, th that's one of the things that uh, that we are getting um, audited on. Um, so yeah, uh, all ADA sits in uh, in the smart contract, but not in the single UTXO. So it's uh, uh, distributed between uh, several uh, UTXOs, and uh, yeah, so. Uh, it, it allows uh, our users to interact with the DAP uh, simultaneously. It's uh, uh, it's quite different from uh, from, for example, Stundexes, which uh, which holds 
uh, all funds of a single pool in, in one UTXO. So are the smart contracts wrote in Aiken or are they in something else? Uh, so we have several scripts uh, in our DAP. Uh, the main ones are uh, this uh, the, the the script that holds the ADA, and then another one that uh, meets the the endpoints, and uh, they are very much connected with each other because uh, you you essentially you cannot withdraw from the protocol without uh, minting or burning uh, some coins. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we kind of haven't covered on the protocol here that you would like to get covered? Um, so, uh, in terms of more uh, more explanations about the protocol, we um, recently we added uh, two uh, business development guys who are doing a lot of materials uh, for the um, for the website and. Uh, for the, the documentation, and so we will have uh, a, a lot more detailed explanations in our user docs. Uh, so uh, I guess we, we could refer uh, your viewers to, to to our user docs uh, for more details on the protocol. Yeah, I leave links to the site, and I was looking through the white paper before this, so I leave links to all of that down below. And final part, actually, on the team, is it how many people are in the team, or is it yourself that's building this? Or? Uh, so I started uh, by uh, just by myself uh, at the very beginning, but uh, right now we have a full-time backend developer, uh, and then we have uh, two uh, two business development guys, uh, as I mentioned, uh, they recently joined and. Uh, we will be also adding uh, a full-time front-end developer in the near future. I'm doing the the, the protocol design and uh, the technical documentation for our team. Well, thanks for your time today. It was great to learn a bit more about it and to see what's coming for Cardano in terms of privacy. Uh, maybe we'll catch up at some point when you're getting close to mainnet and see see how things look. I'll check out the testnet too and probably cover some of how that works in some future videos. Well, Mary, thanks for your time. Anyone got value, please do share it out. Let people know what is being built and the potential use cases for it going forward. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.